Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a thriller film from 2012, titled The Tower. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's Christmas Eve in Central Seoul and the employees of Tower Sky, a 120-story luxurious building complex made of two connected towers, are getting ready for a party they're throwing for all their tenants. This was an idea from Mr. Joe, the owner. General Manager Daeho is a single father that promises to spend the day with his daughter Hana after work. He's also in love with Yoon Hee, the restaurant manager, but he doesn't know how to act around her. In the kitchen, young cook Young Chul is starting his first day at the job with his girlfriend, the receptionist Min Young. Among the tenants, there's Mr. Kim, a new rich that brings his church followers to the party and whose presence bothers the more uptight socialites. It's this kind of socialites that are rude to Aja, the cleaning lady, insulting her and making her pick up the excrement their dog left in the middle of a quarter. There's also an elderly man Mr. Yoon, who is having dinner with Mrs. Young and trying to think of a way to confess his feelings for her. Meanwhile, at the local fire station, Sion Wu joins the team as a rookie fireman. He's very serious and a stickler for the rules, so Sergeant Byung Man and Captain Young Ki have to explain to him that firemen spend most of their day on a break waiting for something to happen. Sion Wu is sent to the showers, but while he's in the middle of washing, the alarm being's ringing and he's called over, so he runs out of the shower naked. This turns out to be a prank from the team, who have prepared a warm welcome for him and officially give him his first helmet. Captain Young Ki is also happy because this is the first Christmas day he is free, so he'll finally be able to spend it with his wife. Back to the towers, problems don't take long to happen. Young Chul accidentally leaves a stove on for too long and causes a small fire. Thankfully, they're able to put it off quickly and Daeho discovers the sprinklers aren't working well because there isn't enough water in them. However, safety section head Mr. Cha is more worried about the party, so he tells them they'll look into this issue after Christmas. Daeho decides to look into it anyway and discovers the pipes are frozen, so floors 60 to 80 don't have water. He reports this to Mr. Cha, but once again, he says it's a problem left for when the party is over. Mr. Joe has a talk with Mr. Cha as well, he doesn't understand why the choppers he hired to throw snow on the buildings have been cancelled. Mr. Cha explains there's strong turbulent wind incoming that won't allow anyone to fly safely, so Mr. Joe makes him call the mayor to ask for special permission to get the choppers anyway. Hana arrives at the building to pick up her dad, but Daeho has to cancel on her because he needs to work. Not willing to give up, Hana begins fake crying and gets the attention of Yoon Hee, who ends up taking care of her until Daeho is done. The two of them bond as Yoon Hee takes Hana on a tour around the building, occasionally sending updates to Daeho through their phones. A Ja is visited by her son, a university student, and she proudly tells him she's asked for three months of advance wages to help him with the tuition fees that she'll be paid at the end of the day. Sadly, the son has a night shift, so they can't spend Christmas together. A few hours later, the party is in full swing with fireworks lighting up the sky as the choppers arrive to sprinkle snow over the towers, and Young Chul makes use of such a beautiful moment to ask Min Young to marry him in the elevator. Suddenly, the predicted turbulent wind begins blowing and the choppers lose control, causing two of them to crash against the towers and start a fire. The firemen are immediately alerted of this and get on their trucks to drive to the towers, getting surprised when Young Ki also comes even if it's his free night. On the way, he calls his wife to tell her he'll arrive late, but an apology isn't enough for her not to get upset. People in the towers begin panicking and running everywhere in search of an exit. They ignore the warnings about not using the elevators and overfill one anyway, which soon proves to be a mistake. An explosion occurs under the elevator, and now the heat causes everyone inside to fry and their shoes to melt until the elevator itself explodes too, breaking the windows and expelling people on fire through them. Yoon-hee notices the fire light coming from the elevator doors and asks everyone to run as she gets away with Hana, but a bunch of people is still reached by the explosion when it blows up the wall. The firemen arrive and begin making a plan to use the truck's hydraulic stair to get inside, keeping in mind there won't be sprinklers and that aviation fuel is extremely dangerous, so the priority will be saving people over putting out the fire. While the team successfully gets inside and reporters begin arriving to cover the news, the victims gather at the tower's restaurant floor. Young Chul and Min Young cry for help from inside the elevator but everyone ignores them except for Nam Ok, a pregnant woman. She uses a metal bar from a decoration to open the doors and help the couple out. A helicopter arrives to rescue people that can reach the roof and everyone celebrates, unaware that the city mayor has also arrived and is giving orders to rescue the socialites first. Daeho is running through the corridors, trying to find his daughter, and he's found by the fireman just in time before an explosion reaches him. Meanwhile, a new fire appears in the kitchen, so Mr. Cha, Young Hee, and the others use the few fire extinguishers available to put it out. This allows A Ja, Young Chul, and Min Young to safely enter through the kitchen doors and join them. Other victims continue to fall through the windows while the mayor lies to the reporters and tells them they're working hard to rescue as many people as possible. The firemen reach a dead end, so Dae Ho uses his knowledge of the building to tell them which wall to break down to keep going. As thanks, Young Ki gives him a walkie-talkie and an oxygen mask for Hana. 
Deho takes a different corridor in search of his daughter and finds various bodies under a pile of debris, but one person is still alive, Aja, who even while hurt thinks about her family and tries to give Deho the money for her son. Deho takes pity on her and, after sharing the mask, he helps her out of the debris. Back to the firemen, they finally reach the source of the fire and try to put it out with their hoses, but it doesn't work. On top of that, the situation is getting more dangerous by the second. Explosions keep happening around them, the floor keeps breaking, and many of them almost fall to their demise. Young Ki fails to save one of his falling men and decides to try a very risky plan. Using his axe, he breaks the windows, intending for the fire to burn itself out. Then, while his men cover him with the hose, he throws his oxygen tank at the flames, and the explosion finally puts the fire out. This allows them to start the evacuation process. People on floor 50 and under will take the stairs, while the ones on the higher floors will use the bridge to go to the other building where they'll be rescued by the helicopter. The problem is the people trapped in the restaurant, an area hard to get out of alive. Speaking of these victims, Mr. Cha sends Young Chul to get more water for everyone. Young Chul finds vending machine and while he begins grabbing as many bottles as possible, he's found by Dae Ho and A Ja. Meanwhile, Mr. Joe reaches the security room and orders to activate the firewalls. His employees refuse because there are many people left to save still, but Mr. Joe wants to save as much of his building as possible and activates it himself. The firewalls begin coming down to seal the corridors, so Young Chul drops the bottles in between him and Dae Ho, they help A Ja run and pass under one of the walls right before it closes the restaurant. After reuniting with Hana, Dae Ho contacts Young Ki through the walkie-talkie and tells him of their location. The firemen begin moving to work on the rescue, but they're contacted by the mayor that tells them to prioritize the socialites. Refusing to ignore people in danger, Young Ki sends Byung Man to get the people in the restaurant while the rest of the team follows the mayor's orders. This ends up being a very frustrating situation. The socialites turn out to be a politician that immediately degrades them for taking so long and the rude lady that makes them wait until she picks up her dog. The three of them are safe and comfortable in their room. Furious over the mayor's priorities, Young Ki contacts him to insult him and ask him to stay off the walkie-talkies. Young Ki also leaves the rest of his team to lead these people out while he and Sion will get back into action. At the restaurant, Byung Man is getting an explosive ready to blow up the firewall. But at that moment, the victims notice cracks appearing on the walls and floor, which the explosion would only make worse. Deho tries to warn Byung Man but he can't be heard through the firewall, and soon the entire room begins crumbling. Young Ki is called by one of his men on the ground telling him not to get in there because it's too dangerous, but he refuses to leave these people behind. The victims in the restaurant run to find safe spots, and that's when Ming Yung notices a gondola hanging outside. The group hurries to jump into it, but Mrs. Yung is too scared. Mr. Yoon comforts her and helps her get into the gondola, but before he can do the same, the explosive finally goes off and kills him. The gondola falls a couple of feet, leaving them near one of the lower floors. Dae Ho gets an idea and makes the group swing the gondola until it breaks the window, allowing everyone to jump back inside except for Mrs. Yoong, who falls to her death when the gondola finally breaks. Young Ki and Sion Wu find a man dying under the debris and grab the gift he wants them to send to his children. Then, they inject him with a sedative to help with the pain so he can have a peaceful death. Dae Ho, Mr. Cha, and Young Chul try to look for a way among the debris to reach the bridge into the other tower while Byung Man finally wakes up and begins wandering around, eventually finding Mr. Kim and his followers praying in the swimming pool. Sion Wu and Young Ki are looking for Byung Man, but they cut their search short when they see the group from the restaurant trying to cross the bridge. They run to them and stop them, explaining the floor is weak and they could easily fall. The firemen cross the bridge first, marking the safe sections with small lights so they know where to step. Sion Wu stays at the other end and Young Ki goes back to guide the group as they cross. Hana goes first and Nam Ok follows her, but the floor soon starts cracking. Mr. Cha doesn't want to stay behind so he runs to try to make it before the worst happens, but the floor finally breaks for good and he falls to his death. Sion Wu hurries to grab Hana and takes her into the other tower while Young Ki brings Nam Ok back, keeping everyone else from going farther now that the entire bridge is going down. The security team informs the mayor that soon the building will collapse into its twin. The only way to minimize the tragedy is to blow the building up, which pisses Mr. Joe off. The mayor approves of the plan, ignoring the group of people that still need rescue because the building falling would kill a larger number. The other firemen contact Young Ki to inform him of the situation, but he also receives some useful information. He has 10 minutes to release the water from the tanks. Dae Ho accepts to take the risk and goes with Young Ki to see the tanks, since his fingerprint is needed to open the door. The two men make it there in time and let the water loose, which puts out the fire on the emergency stairs and allows Byung Man to evacuate Mr. Kim and his followers. The water also reaches Yoon Hee and the others, who hold onto the railings not to be pushed away by the strong wave. Sion Wu and Hana make it to the roof of the other tower, and while they prioritize the socialites in the rescue, Sion Wu is allowed to go too because he has a child with him. Byung Man and Mr. Kim's party come across Yoon Hee's group, so they decide to wait all together. 
Explosions are happening through the manholes on the streets now too, so the mayor orders the bomb squad to start working. Dae Ho and Young Ki return to the group, but the captain still refuses to give up, so they decide to try out the elevator. It's dangerous, but it's their only option, and staying would kill them anyway. The elevator begins falling at an impressive speed, and when it gets stuck on a floor on fire, the group begins jumping to make it fall again. Eventually, they get stuck between floors 5th and 6th, so they force the doors open and discover there is enough room to get out. Daeho and Young Ki get out first to help Nam Ok leave as well, but before they can help more people, the elevator falls again. The trio makes it outside and Daeho reunites with Hana. The elevator group is hurt but alive except for Mr. Kim, who dies from a metal rod piercing him. Outside, Daeho and Young Ki still want to help so they look at the building blueprints and come up with a plan. If they blow up the water storage tanks, the current could carry the remaining victims through the sewers and out into the river. Young Ki, Sion Wu, and a third fireman go back inside, finding the group, thanks to Byung Man constant calling out for them and banging on the debris. To reach them though, they must cross the elevator shaft, and when they do, the bomb's remote control falls from Young Ki's pocket. The firemen guide the party to the sewers and leave Byung Man looking over them while they go back inside the building to prepare the bomb. Once the explosives are on the tanks, Young Ki sends Sion Wu and his companion away, closing the door between them as he explains he must stay behind to denote the bomb manually. After a heartful goodbye from his men, Young Ki calls his wife and leaves a message on her voicemail, apologizing for so many failed Christmas and thanking her for so many years of patience. Then he detonates the bomb, instantly dying as the water is released, helping the party of survivors and firemen go through the sewers. Just in time too, because the tower is blown up then. It's already morning by the time the group makes it to the river, and there are already ships waiting to rescue them. Dae Ho and Hana reunite with Yoon Hee, and A Ja gets to see her son again. Sion Wu, Byung Man, and his companion reunite with their team, and they give the bad news to Young Ki's wife, who falls to her knees in tears for her husband. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.